All right, so welcome to video number three and the second case of how to use this uh, uh, workflow and, and layout and, and what well, UI I, I propose or want to discuss for the blocks and layout initiative for Drupal 8. In this second case, uh, I'm going to show you how to uh, work with blocks and layouts if you want to add uh, a page for an article to related content. And I'm using this because it requires what's called, uh, has been called contexts. Uh, I'm, I'm calling it as you might know by now, either data sources or dynamic settings. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we want to create um, a page for an article's related content. We start by adding a page as we did in the previous uh, case, but uh, when we set a path for the page, we add a dynamic part here, uh, like percent node. It could be percent whatever, but that will be interpreted as a dynamic part or something. Um, when we uh, continue from here, we get another settings page, a new settings page inserted, uh, because uh, Drupal recognizes that, hey, you have some dynamic stuff in your path, how should this be interpreted? And we say here, well, this is a node ID in, in the path, so uh, bring out a node object from it, like that. We could uh, use access conditions, only have this work for, well, only have this page being callable for certain users or if this node has certain conditions fulfilled or, or things. And we could also provide a menu item for it, like a, a menu tab or something on articles. Never mind. If we click uh, Save and Continue, we are brought into the uh, builder for the populated layouts, the layout populator. And we, as usual, can select a layout here. I've changed this now to a 1 plus 2 layout. We have 1 plus 2. I've given it a name called Related. And I've added some components here. Never mind this one here. This is a, 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 a something we'll look at in the next uh, video. But here is a component that requires, uh, well, that has some dynamic settings that requires data sources. It has two settings. The second one is simple. You just set a number of rows to display for related content. Uh, and this one is more interesting. It requires you to uh, plug in uh, a data, a data source. And we have that, uh, the node from the URL uh, that the path has that is calling this block. So we plug in the block, uh, the node, we plug in the node here uh, as a dynamic setting, and we will get then and the rela related content for that node. Um, and it would look something like this when completed. Um, now, something is happening here between uh, creating this page and starting to edit this uh, uh, layout, this populated layout. Uh, when saving this page, we save the actual page and it's being stored. The page knows that it has some input data, it, it reads a node from the path so it knows that uh, well the wizard knows that it should call a block probably call a block that has um, uh, well that, that uses this node so when this is saved a new block is being created and that block is provided and it has doesn't show here but if we click this show dynamic data we will see that it has a node being provided from outside and we can well I'll get into de details about that later on, but uh, as with the previous case, the, pa uh, the page and the block are separate, uh, but uh, they're created in a smart way by this wizard because it knows that the path has a node here, so uh, the block should probably have a node as well. Um, yeah, that's it. A few simple steps, I think, uh, when you create a block, even when you have uh, like context or, or dynamic settings in it. This is some kind of drop down. If we had more nodes to select from, we, we could do that in this drop down here. And yeah, see you in the next screencast where I'm going to talk more about this dynamic data stuff. See you there.